Hello. Hopefully this is working. So uh, this is the live chat for the Hillman Imp. And uh, hopefully you have some good questions and we can talk about the Hillman Imp or whatever springs to mind. So I am waiting for questions. Uh, I guess while I'm waiting for questions, um, other than the fact that Midhat Havrat said, this thing reminds me of the NSU Prince. Yes, it looks very similar to the NSU Prince. Um, hello, Miguel, Dennis, Andrea. Uh, yeah, so uh, while waiting for questions, one thing that really struck me about the Hillman Imp uh, was after 1981 when the uh, Hillman Imp or the Hillman um, Sunbeam, the Sunbeam, Chrysler Sunbeam ended production. They closed the factory down and the devastation to the Linwood area was terrible. If you go and look at um, what Linwood like now, there's lots of closed down shopping centers and um, just everything's just in rack and ruin. It's um, really not very nice. Anyway, let's start with a positive, shall we? <laughs> let's start with just talking about terrible things. Um, okay, so not seeing any questions. Wondering why someone from the Eastern Bloc didn't produce Hillman Imp. Well, they, a lot of these Eastern European countries ended up doing deals with car companies who were more sympathetic to working with communist countries, and that was really feared. So you see Poland and Yugoslavia and countries like that, they're all working with um, uh, Fiat. Um, was it Dacia, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong, after many people told me my Dasha video, I was saying it wrong. Um, yeah, they used Renault. So um, I think it I mean, wasn't a very popular car. So I think once the, the stigma of the Hillman Imp not being very successful, no one wanted to go anywhere near it. Um, I love your channel. In what modern car builder is Hillman taken in? I don't understand that question, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Why do you think rear-wheel drive cars are dying? Yet? Are they? Um, I think it's I think it's easier to make front-wheel drive cars, certainly with internal combustion engine, but with electric vehicles, it doesn't matter where the uh, drive is; it can be front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. So, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Okay, right. Could you do a review of the Fiat 124 Sports Coupe? There's lots of cars I would love to do, and just having the time to do them. Um, a lot of it is, will my mainly British audience know what that car is? And obviously, I need to get a certain amount of views to get the revenue to pay for spending two weeks to make a video. So there's a lot of it I, I base on, um, you know, is the thing actually going to, to, to do well? But certainly the Fiat 124 Sport Coupe, I'd probably do the whole Fiat 124, and certainly at some point I would do that. Dacia. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, one day I'll say these things right. Uh, um, have you ever seen a Hillman Imp in person? Yes. In fact, the at the end of the Hillman Imp video, you see um, the Hillman Imp Caledonian, a video of that. And that was me going to a car show in Bridge North. And of course, in the UK in the 1970s, they were everywhere. I saw them all the time. Never driven in one, never been driven by anyone in one. Um, I'd love to try some of these cars. I've never driven a an original Mini. I would love to have uh, love to have driven one of those. Um, <laughs> the Toyota Century. I'm learning all about the Toyota Century right now. Ultra Guy 87 because um, the one of the two videos, two videos that won the last poll, were the Fiat Uno and the um, Lexus LS. So I'm learning all about the Lexus LS and. Part of that is learning about the Toyota Century. Um, interesting, the Toyota Camry, which is Camuri in uh, Japanese, means little crown. And the larger car to that was to the Toyota Crown. So there you go. A little bit of trivia about the name for the Camry. Um, yes, Robert. Uh, glad your father worked in the press shop. Um, you must have had some great stories about that. Um, Good. I'm glad to see Lim was looking better now. It's got a new shopping centre. Uh, the video I saw was from I think 2007, and it was it was a really sad place to be. 
Um, Toyota MR2 Mark One. I wanted a Toyota MR2, uh, the equalizer. Um, I wanted one of those more than anything when I was 17, 18. In fact, I didn't, I was go not going to go to university. I was going to go straight out after my A-levels and just get a job so I could afford an MR2 and buy a brand new one because I was so smitten with it. Um, and of course, you know, you get older and um, you decide to go back and look at that. And I, I did look at buying a used one and it looked like it was absolutely beat up piece of crap. <laughs> um, I did look at the Toyota MR2 Mark III, but I can't get in it. I'm a five foot 10, five foot 11, depending on, I'm shrinking, I'm getting older, I'm shrinking. Um, and I can't, I can't change the gear stick without, I can't, can't change the gears without banging my knee on the uh, steering wheel. So I would like to Mark III, but I never got one. <coughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of rust with those those old cars, of course. Yes, um, let's see. Uh, more questions. I saw an imp on Channel 5 last night. <laughs> Michael Crawford in Some Mothers Do Advent. That was, that was a pretty good show. It hasn't really aged well, but it was massive in the 70s. Um, what do I think of Wheeler Dealers? I love Wheeler Dealers, and I, my, my dad has a Sky Cube, whatever it is in, in the UK, and I, I go over there every three months or so, and I have a thing that records all the Wheeler Dealers. So when I go there, there's like all these loads of Wheeler Dealers. So I just sort of like binge watch all the different episodes. Um, yeah, I love that show. Although I do fast forward through the the bits that uh, you know when they're testing out out at the end, I just bought, go through that. I just want to see whether they make a profit on it at the end. Greetings from the Earth's moon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Peugeot 205 was considered as a successor of the Hillman Imp. I don't quite see how that is. Um, okay, well, fair enough. Could you do a video on the history of the Datsun Nissan car company? Um, yeah, that would be a big video and there's lots and lots of other things to do at the moment, but yes, it would be nice to do that. I'm sort of covering that a little bit with some of the, uh, the history of, uh, of, of Nissan. Um, glad to see you, Sharon. I uh, hope I'm saying that name, Sharon Chu. Uh, I'm glad to see you had uh, four imps. Yes. Um, what vehicles do you and the missus currently have and plan to get? Um, I've got a Tesla Model 3. Um, Mrs. Big Car has a new Mini. Um, um, my daughter's borrowing the Honda CRV that we had. I've thought about getting uh, a Mazda MX-5, but the problem with open tops is that they're great when it's about 70 degrees or about between about 20 and 25 degrees Celsius. But if it's warmer than that, it, you just get the sun beats down on you, bakes your head, especially my head. And if I put a hat on, the hat will probably blow off. And if it's too cold, then it, it's it's no good. So there's, yeah, I'd, I'd like I'd like the handling of a MX-5, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I I think I'd probably want not not want to get an open top. Um, what videos you got lined up for the future? The next one coming out is a video on the Renault Scenic which will be next Friday, this coming Friday. And that's with uh, an interview with Patrick McQuemmel. Hopefully that one, hopefully you'll like that one. It's, uh, I think it's a really good video, it really dives into some of the background behind that car, the first MPV. And talk. I talk a lot about MPVs and where they've gone and where they're going to in the future. So um, let's see. And uh, then the Lexus LS is the next script I'm working on, but that will be probably the end of August when that one comes out. Okay. Would you do a video on the HIMP's actual success of the Chrysler Sunbeam? Yes, I probably would at some point. There's lots of videos I do, <laughs> lots of cars I do videos about, but there's only one of me and uh, it takes a long time to make these videos. Um, were you disappointed when Ford killed the Mondeo? Yes, it, I mean, these things go through cycles, don't they? So, yeah, it, it, it's sad to see cars disappearing. And I think with the economic slowdown with COVID and all the problems we've had, it's given car manufacturers 
an excuse to take a long, hard look at their lineup and say, well, we don't need this and we don't need this because we are in this inflection point where we're moving away from internal combustion engines, we're moving to electric cars, we're moving away from saloons and moving towards crossovers, whether you like that or not. And so Ford has said they're getting rid of all their passenger cars a couple of years ago. They're just going to SUVs, crossovers, trucks, things like that. Um, so it's inevitable, I think, that the Monday was going to get killed. It's surprising that they announced they're going to stop production of the um, Ford Focus. That was a big shock. And I would like to do a video about the, the Ford Focus, particularly after that announcement. So, so maybe you'll see that uh, coming up in the future. So thank you, The Equalizer. Keep up the good work. Yes, I'll try. Um, let's see. Greetings from the Czech Republic. Thank you, Philip. Um, have you ever driven a Tatra? No, I haven't. <laughs> Sorry. There's actually very few cars I've driven. Um, it would be lovely to, to try try to do that. Where do you get your B-roll video footage? Um, uh, it's a lot of just um, images and videos that are um, off usually off YouTube, but it's 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 usually um, images and videos that have come from the actual manufacturer themselves. So I, I tend to avoid content which is copyrighted or anything like that because obviously that's not the right thing to do. The Nissan Primera, yes, I would uh, certainly do one on the Primera at some point. Again, lots and lots of videos I would do do ones on. Um, did you get those little books, The Observer's Guide to Automobiles? I remember get, I did a lot of I Spy. And I actually talk about I Spy in the Renault Saving video. Um, it's a glorious Lego 8880 car, the oldest. You know, I don't know what the 8880 is. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember things off by heart. Is that the one that's over there? That isn't the oldest car. The one here isn't the oldest car. This is the coolest car in my collection. Um, uh, did you own? Do you own Secret Ford's volume? I own. I, I own a lot of the books that Steve Saxty has uh, has produced, but that's because he's sent me them. He just sent me uh, this one, uh, which I got when I was in the UK, which is a Secret Ford's RS Icons edition, and this is what he made for um, as a package. And it has a whole load of really cool images, basically stuff he couldn't fit in the in, in the other in the other um, uh, books. But it's got lots of cool images, which you know have maybe never even seen the sight of uh, uh, the light of day. So, okay, would love to see something on Porsche. I did the Porsche nine one four, and. Um, I thought about doing the 924, I actually put that into a poll and nobody wants to see that, which surprised me. I thought that, uh, that the 924 would be a popular one for people to look at, but uh, anyway, maybe not. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more. Our favorite car maker, well, Tesla at the moment, that's kind of got a Tesla. <laughs> what do you think of the VW Beetle? Um, it was a car that had a lot of staying power it wasn't very ergonomic when I, um, I I was in one in the 1970s. Uh, we had one as a higher a rental car because the Volkswagen we had wasn't uh, wasn't very good. Um, um, sorry, uh, there we go. Um, yes, but uh, ergonomically it wasn't uh, that great. So. Um, Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more. Um, one thing I didn't mention at the time in the video was the, first of all, the car, the Hillman used the Coventry Climax engine, which um, was obviously from the company Coventry Climax. It was based in Coventry, but they were bought by Jaguar in 1963, the same time that um, the Hillman was being launched. Jaguar, of course, was then bought by British Leyland. So by 1968, British Leyland were making the engines for the Hillman Imp, which was owned by Chrysler. So it was just a mad situation. Yes. Um, thank you, Jeff. Yes, we're almost getting to 200,000 subscribers. Um, very close. It's uh, quite quite amazing, really. <laughs> this little channel where I do these silly videos. Um, uh, how about a mini Moke video? Um, 
maybe um, I've, I've sort of avoided doing videos on the Mini because I uh, it's just everybody knows videos. Everybody knows the history of things like that. In fact, I, I avoided doing Hill, the Hillman Imp for a long time because there was the Carl Star video with Quentin Wilson that talked a lot about it. I thought, well, if there's a video about it already, then people don't really want to watch another one. But apparently I'm wrong. A lot of people have watched this video, so that's that's very nice. Do you remember seeing any American cars on the road back in the UK? No. In the UK, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, very rarely would you see uh, an American car. Occasionally, you'd see one that someone had imported and they sort of try and put this the ginormous... <laughs> The ginormous British license plate, they're trying to sort of shove it into the uh, the, the American small uh, place. Of course, it didn't really fit very well. Um, oh, John, you're unsubscribing. There's so many questions, I can't get to everybody. Um, sorry, there's just a lot of questions going on. And I, I used to do the... the, the smart chat thing where you can sort of highlight your chats and pay money for it but honestly half of that money goes to 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 google and i don't really want half of the money of that going to google when presumably people are trying to sponsor me so i've i, I disabled that um if you want to sponsor me then you can be, become a patron or go to my um uh, paypal page but uh, yeah or just keep watching my videos with adverts that would be very useful thank you um Let's see. The ultimate car was the Apollo Lunar Rover. Yes, that was a pretty cool car. Never driven one of those. <laughs> I've seen one. They have one at the Seattle Air and Space Museum. Presumably a mock-up, not the real one. Um, uh, I've been pondering what, why do British seem to consider the Ford that Ford is a British car maker? Um, Ford really spent a long time in the UK making very British cars. Um, they, certainly if you look at the, the 60s, the 50s and the 60s, they were producing cars that were only for the British car market. And they had car production there. But then as my, I, I, I think I, I mentioned this in the Vauxhall, Vauxhall video, is that how, what do you describe as a British car company? Because Vauxhall was bought by the Americans by GM in 1925 and yet it was still considered a British car company and then it was then they stopped design and development in the 70s and yet it was still considered a British car company so and then the shareholders for all these companies are based not just in that country but all around the world so Ford is owned by people all over the world it has factories all over the world it has people who work in their factories that are from different countries from where the actual manufacturing is taking place. So is Ford an American car company? It's based in America, but if 90% if of its sales are outside America, is it an American car company? Anyway, there's a question for you. Uh, would you do an episode on the Vauxhall Velox or Cresta? Yes, but it's a it's a pretty old car, and I'm finding that like really old cars, people are not as interested in watching videos about. Um, considering the U.S. U.K. Granada versus the U.S. Granada, yes, um, the Granada video. I talk a little bit about that in my Granada video. The U.S. Granada didn't look a particularly good car. <laughs> the U.K. Granada looked like a very nice car. Um, GM wanted to buy the Linwood factory, but PSA destroyed the tracks and no one could use the factory. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, that's an interesting thing to, to hear about. Uh, thank you, Robert. <laughs> My mother has a US Granada. It was rubbish. <laughs> I got the best comment I got from somebody uh, on one of my videos recently was they said, um, uh, I, I remember this car. And when I was a kid, I was hit by it, but luckily I didn't get hurt because I was fat. <laughs> Which, the way that they described it, it was just quite funny. Um, can I do one on the Morris Oxford? I have. I've done the Hindustan Ambassador. Um, so sort of on the Morris Oxford. And again, a lot of these really older cars, um, 
it would be difficult to, to do a video on those. Um, do you think cars are losing their character? Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, that's, that's probably a recurring theme of some of my videos saying that you know cars tend to be a little bit dull and boring nowadays. Um, do a history video on the history of MG. Yes, at some point, I would love to do that. Um, I've, on the back burner is a video about the MGB or the MGC, uh, MGA, of course. At some point, I'll, I'll do one on that. Uh, let's see. Canadians make the best cars in the world. I'm sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dan, from London. Um, the future of the Ford Fiesta. Well, there's a good question. Uh, dead meme. Uh, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? If, if, if you're buying a Ford Fiesta for £15,000, but you can buy a Dacia entry-level car for half of that. And they're not that bad, quite frankly. I've driven a, an MG, one of those little M, the new MGs, a couple of times. They're a bit tinny, but if it's half the price, I'll go for tinny, really. 8,000, 7,000 pounds versus 15. I think the, the Ford Fiesta is a, is a tough sell at this point, but uh, and there you go. Um, can we get a video on the Land Rover Discovery? Um, yes, I'd, again, that's another one I'd like to, and the Freelander at some point, and sort of finish off the whole sort of Land Rover story. Um, odd, but yeah, the Volkswagen Sharon and the Ford Galaxy, Charles Street, yes. I thought about doing that. This I, I, I originally thought that I'd do a video about this sort of blip where everyone started making... Um, bigger MPVs, uh, the, the big minivans in, in Europe. And suddenly like the Volkswagen Sharon and Ford Galaxy was like it. And then suddenly, and then you never heard anything about them. But um, but actually they've kept on selling. So <laughs> that wasn't really, yeah. <laughs> I started looking at the, the, the figures and they, they've kept selling. So that wouldn't really work. But yes, it'd be nice to do a video on that and why, why did we end up having a Seat and a Volkswagen and a Ford make this minivan all at the same time? Vauxhall Signum, yes, I'd like to do a video on that at some point. Um, <clears throat> what's your favorite Lego kit you've built? Um, that one there. <laughs> That's my favorite car. Um, the reason I like this is because the thing I like about the Technic models is what they've done, uh, all the uh, clever bits they do in, with all the mechanicals of the Technic bits. I, rather than something looking nice, I prefer all the, uh, the, the Technic bits. And yes, the, the, the lights pop up and down, which is not that exciting, but it has four wheel drive. So the first uh, Lego car didn't have a limited slip difference, but then the second one did. And as you can see, there's a limited slip diff, in, or there's a slip diff in there. And there's another one at the back because there's one right in the middle because this is four wheel drive. So it was the first one made that's four wheel drive. There's the gearbox in here with two, two things so you can select different gears. But not only is it four wheel drive, it's four wheel steering. So it actually has steering um, that steers the front and the rear wheels. And I don't know if you can see it. It, does, it doesn't steer the rear wheels sort of crazy a lot. It just just a little bit. And it's very clever. And this was, I think, the early 90s, mid 90s that they came out with this. Maybe that's the Lego 8880, anyway. Um, okay. Less about Lego, more about cars. Um, Ford is switching to the Volkswagen platform to make EVs in Europe. You know, that wouldn't surprise me. Volkswagen is so far ahead with, um, with, with that. Um, Let's see. Um, can you do a video on four-wheel steering? Um, yeah, the problem with that is I'm not very technical. I'm rubbish at the technical part of cars. I can't sort of fix a car. Someone sent a, um, I think, a message earlier on saying, have you ever restored a car? No, I've never restored a car because you don't want me going anywhere near a car. I'll make a right mess of it. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I try, I've done videos on turbochargers on my little car channel and um, retractable um, doors and things like that. But 
honestly, the amount of mistakes I made on the turbocharger video, it's, it wasn't worth doing. So, um, so if I did one on four wheel steering, I would just get everything wrong. So, <laughs> think Volkswagen will overtake Teslas in, on EVs. Yeah, I would think they probably would. They're really going strong and competitively pricing EVs, and they have such a big factory base. Um, they're going all in on EVs, and they could certainly they could certainly do well. Um, the best quality car on the market at the moment, well, probably the Mercedes S Class. If you're going to look at any particular car, um, I'm spending a lot of time looking at the Lexus LS, and I mean that was pitched as the best car in the world ever when it was launched in 1990, and it probably was in 1990. Nowadays. I'm not sure it is. I think uh, BMW and Mercedes have caught up and maybe overtaken them. And um, who knows? I don't drive those cars. I don't go, don't go to dealers and look at those cars. So I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. What do you think of Chinese cars? Are there any in the UK? Yes, uh, there certainly are Chinese cars in the UK. MG uh, cars are Chinese. They uh, they use the MG branding. Um, and uh, they're fine. I, I'd say I've, I've driven one, one of the little MGs, and it's a bit tinny, but it's fine. It gets the job done. It got me, you know, around the country. So, yeah, why not? Um, would you ever do a channel not involving cars? I did have this idea of doing the history of house designs. So in the UK, you have, in the 19th century, you had terraced houses, and all these terraced houses were designed the same way. And then in the early part of the 20th century, you have different styles of houses coming in. And you can tell a house in the UK, just looking at it, kind of what decade it was made in, because they just made the same houses. That were, for that 1920s, they're all, all making the same kind of house. Um, and it'd be interesting just talking about all the ins and outs of why they designed a house that way at, at that particular time. But I don't think anybody would watch that video. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Originally, the idea of the big car channel, it wasn't going to be exclusively cars, but um, people like cars, and I like looking into history. At the end of the day, I like history, so I love going back and looking at history. Um, let's see. Um, thank you. I'm glad you would watch videos about that. M. Gothenburg. Um, yes, architectural history. <laughs> The problem about doing videos on that house thing would, uh, if I've got to learn all, all about it and find sources to be able to do it, and I can't think where to start. Um, but anyway, there's an idea. If anyone wants to make a channel and do that and just get into it, I would watch that. I would totally watch that. <laughs> um, I'm fascinated by videos of British cars. Why do you think they were so boring in the 50s and 60s? I don't think cars were boring in the 50s and 60s. I think they're maybe more boring now than they were then. Um, no, they're very interesting, uh, but I think in any day you're always framed by nostalgia for your childhood. So for me, the cars in the seventies are all very exciting because that's the cars I saw when I was being driven around or walking around. And I used to know every car name and brand by just looking at it. I'm not sure I can do that now, but, uh, I could at that time because I, I loved I love cars so much. And again, the 80s, you know, so the 70s and 80s, everything's framed by that. Yes, Vauxhall Nova, probably an Opel course, a Vauxhall Opel course of story, I think I would do talking about the Nova as well. So yes. These K cars, um, yes, the I talk a bit about that in my parking space video. Uh, Japanese K cars are kind of fun, but I'm not sure I'd go and do a, a, a video about it. Um, what is the worst car ever made by BL? Um, is there a bad, is there a car, good car that BL made? <laughs> um, I don't know. That's subjective. <laughs> that's whatever people want to say. I would say it's probably the Allegro. It's, that's not a car that I particularly liked. Um, favorite American muscle car. I'm not really into American cars. Again, that's just my, um, my, my background, just growing up with British cars. Um, thank you, Treve. Um, Trev, Treve. Um, uh, let's see what else have we got. Let's. Um, 
Oh, another thing about the Hillman Imp, um, because we'll finish this uh, live stream in a little minute, but I had another talking point I thought I would uh, talk about, which is the Hillman Imp. I say in the video, it took too long to release, and yet it was rushed. It took eight years to release the Hillman Imp, which is an, an ice age in, in car production. And and yet, when it gets to the the, the end, they're rushing through trying to get the, uh, the, the car into production, which just smacks of just terrible management. First of all, they should have put more money and resources behind it earlier on to get it, get it to production. They also didn't have the right staff to be able to do a good job on it. Um, and the, the guy that made the gearbox was fantastic. I mean, they made us an all synchronous gearbox that uh, BMC said couldn't be done. Um, but then they just messed up with certain other parts of the car that were unreliable. And so, yeah, it's just, it just, Roots was not doing a very good job in the, in the mid fifties to early sixties. Um, uh, would I do a consider, would I consider doing a channel on old British motorcycles? Motorcycles aren't really my thing. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, and I've got to focus on something, so I'll focus on things that, that I'm interested in, and uh, cars are really my thing, really. Would I ch would do a video on Honda Civic? Yes, I would, because I had one for seven years, and I'd love the Honda Civic. Um, one day I will. Um, let's see. Um, the Fiat Strada. I'd like to do the Fiat Strada. I think that was a cool-looking car. Um, yes, that would be a fun one to do. Okay. Um, well, I'll call it today. We don't want to do too much of this thing. Um, thank you very much for your questions. Thank you for watching uh, the videos. And thank you for the, the watching this live stream. I hope it was fairly interesting and exciting for you. Well, it's not really exciting, is it? But it, hopefully it was, it was a fun thing to do for half an hour. Um, anyway, um, yes, thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.